It's long past time we end the forever wars, which have cost us untold blood and treasure. I have long argued that we should bring home the vast majority of our combat troops from the wars in Afghanistan and the Middle East and narrowly focus on our mission to deal with Al-Qaeda and ISIS in the region. And we should end our support for the Saudi-led war in Yemen. It's hurting us. Staying entrenched in unwittable conflicts drains our capacity to lead on so many other issues that require our attention. It prevents us from rebuilding the other instruments of American power. So I'll make it my mission to restore American leadership, elevate diplomacy as a principal tool of our foreign policy. I will reinvest in a diplomatic core that this administration has hollowed out and put our diplomacy back in the hands of genuine professionals so you don't hear an echo on the seventh floor of the State Department any longer. Above all, diplomacy requires credibility. And Donald Trump has absolutely corroded our country's credibility. In order to gain and regain the confidence of the world, we need to have, we have to prove again that America says what it means and means what it says, especially when it comes to the challenges that will define our time. The renewal threat, the renewed threat of nuclear war, mass migration, disruptive technologies, climate change. We cannot be a credible voice on the proliferation of nuclear security and on proliferation of nuclear security while we're abandoning the very deals that we had negotiated. From North Korea to Iran, Russia to Saudi Arabia, Trump has made the prospect of nuclear proliferation a new nuclear arms race, and even the use of nuclear weapons more likely, not less. As President, I renew our commitment to arms control for a new era. The historic Iran nuclear deal we negotiated blocked Iran from gaining nuclear weapons with inspectors on the ground, international inspectors confirming that the agreement was being kept. Yet Trump cast it aside, prompting Iran to restart its nuclear program, become more provocative, and raising the risk of another disastrous war in the region. If Tehran returns to compliance with the deal, I would rejoin the agreement and work with our allies to strengthen and extend it while more effectively pushing back against Iran's destabilizing activities, which under the agreement we were allowed to do and we had partners to do with us. And the last example I'll end with today is how the United States must lead the world to take on the existential threat we all face, climate change. If we don't get this right, not much else will matter. I'll put us on a track to achieve a clean energy economy with zero emissions, net zero emissions by 2050. And equally important, because the United States makes up only 15% of global emissions, I'll leverage our economic and our moral authority to put the world on a more urgent course by rejoining the Paris Climate Accord.